Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, that's better. Uh, my name is Bill Fish. I'm with the Kentucky Dipper Festival, and my partner in crime back there is Suzanne Wright. And uh, we also have Catherine back by the door. She's making sure she's taking copious notes for us. So one of what, what we'd like to do today is have the students present to you. But before we do that, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. One is you have a yellow card in front of you. So if there is a commitment that you're willing to make today and communicate back to us, uh, please write that commitment along with your name on a card and give that to one of us or Catherine on your way um, out the door this afternoon. But we certainly want, before we get started, we want to give the opportunity for the panelists to know, uh, for the uh, presenters to know who you are. So we'll pass the mic. If you could tell them your name and your company or affiliation, uh, we'll get started then. Good afternoon, everybody. Is it afternoon now? Yeah, I think we made it. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so I'm Dior Cotton. I work with Humana. I lead our population health strategy. And so we're one of the sponsors of this event and happy and excited to hear your story and learn what you've been working on with this project. Good morning. My name's Greg Rockman. I'm a property developer and community volunteer. Looking forward to your presentation. Good morning. Good afternoon. Right, good afternoon. Hi, my name is Beverly Moss, and in one life, I'm a professor at Ohio State University, although this semester I'm a visiting professor at the University of Louisville, but I'm also the director of the Bread Loaf Teacher Network, which uh, I think you have some affiliation with. Hello, I am Cheryl Bibby from um, JCPS uh, Professional Development and Learning Department. Ben Johnson, Assistant Director, Louisville Parks and Recreation. Everybody's been great so far, so I'm expecting the same. Good afternoon, I am Lori Roberts. I am the Interim Director at Brightside. Hello, I'm Lori Haydorn Disselkamp, and I'm with the Earth and Spirit Center, and I'm the program manager and retreat director. It's like a 27-acre um, nature preserve, and we teach mindfulness and meditation. And I know Matt Kaufman, so he invited me, so I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky Crump. I'm director of resource development for JCPS, so that means everything grants, donations, fundraising, so I'm here to help find get you all connected to some grant opportunities and donors, and I already have a couple written down. Thank you so much, panelists, for being here. We are so, so, so thankful for taking the time today to listen to the amazing group of students who are going to present to us an idea that they've been working so hard on. So without further ado, I am going to go ahead and pitch it over to Outdoor Learning and Lear Lending Spaces. It's on you. Eighty-six percent of teachers say kids should learn about climate change. Only 42 percent actually teach it. A survey in 2021 revealed that nearly a quarter of teenage students in the U.S. have experienced the inability to access menstrual hygiene products. One out of seven people in Kentuckyana struggle with hunger. One in five Americans do not have broadband access at home or a cell phone according to Pew Research. 40,000 kids in Kentucky aged 6 through 17 often deal with depression throughout the year according to NAMI which is National Associates of Mental Health. Hello my name is Emma Dobson and I'm working to ensure quality education for all. My name is Erin Crittenden and I'm fighting for environmental education and sustainability. My name is Hannah Johnson, and I am fighting for gender equality. Hello, my name is Megan, and I am fighting for the hunger and the poor. We are the next generation creating ability when there's a lack of accessibility. So thank you all for being here today and taking the time to come and meet us and learn about our dynamic project, Community Lending Villages and Outdoor Learning Spaces. When Fern Creek Library was shuttered, thousands were left out in the cold, from adults looking for job opportunities to young students reading their first books. Our project began with a partnership between BLTN, NextGen, and Fern Creek Friends of the Library, and the installation of a little library near Fern Creek High School, bringing literacy access back to the community. 
Like a beautifully planted seed, the project splattered and flourished. Students have brainstormed ways to address the dire needs of our commonwealth and the world in order to provide universal access to the basic necessities of the modern world. But other seeds, when planted, turn into vibrant landscapes. Close your eyes and imagine a late summer day. The wind blowing gently on your face, the leaves rustling in the trees. A monarch butterfly lays eggs on a milkweed leaf, then drinks a nutritious meal from its pink flowers. Nature supports a complex communities of plants and animals just as it supports us. Nature provides, trees survive wood to create homes, native spaces provide food for insects. They then become food for 96% of all songbirds. Natural resource, trees clean our air, reduce the impact of urban heat. Islands affect, soil cleans our water and store sub carbon. Nature heals. Over 100 studies have shown that being in nature, living in nature, or even viewing nature is, and painting and videos have, um, have in, pa positive impacts on our brain, bodies, feelings, and thought process and social interactions. Research shows that outdoor learning can have huge benefits on student mental health and academic achievement. Students are often calmer and better able to focus when learning in nature and have more positive social interactions. And students want to learn about nature. 95% of students surveyed at Fern Creek High School believe that the outdoors is a good place to learn. The benefits don't stop there. Studies show that the more time you spend in nature as a child, the more likely you are to take active care of nature in adulthood. Building sustainable communities require more than just recycling bins, mass transit, and solar panels. Sustainable communities value healthy people, healthy air, and healthy water. Sustainable communities empower youth through high quality education. Sustainable communities prioritize equality, peace, and justice. Sustainable communities nature the ones that are in need. Sustainable communities commit to fighting climate change through actions, not words. Sustainable communities also advocate for nature and its benefits to our health and our well-being. To build sustainable communities and help repair social ties weakened by the coronavirus pandemic, we need to invest in shared spaces that allow us to gather, connect, and to learn within our own communities. If we value community, we must continue to cultivate it. In addition to the learning libraries, we will be providing green spaces for schools. The planting seeds bed will allow native plants to nurture habitats, food bearing plants to provide those in need, as well as education and social emotional benefits for students. Did you guys know that there's actually an antidepressant found in soil? There is a microbe that has been found to stimulate the production of serotonin in brains and that can actually help you feel more relaxed and happier whenever you're touching dirt. We have used the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals as a compass in order to address the different needs the leading libraries could provide. Although we're labeling the lending libraries as libraries, they're not only restricted to books. The beautiful concept behind these houses is providing resources to your community. The idea behind the design is flexibility and accessibility. You can change, customize, and tailor your lending library to provide appropriate resources that may be requested within your community. Soon, PRP High School will be hosting a book lending library. It will allow students within our own school community and the community that surrounds us to check out books when the school library is closed and to encourage learning through our youngest students. At Fern Creek High School, we are implementing five raised planting beds for native and food bearing plants. We're also planning to place a food bank house to address the needs of those who are lacking food resources in our community and a lending library house to serve both Fern Creek High School and Fern Creek Elementary School and our community. This area will be located adjacent to our orchard, which will soon also provide food to our community. Community members are quickly connecting 
For example, Liberty High School has envisioned a lending library along the path that parents and grandparents take their children down to a local playground. Uh, their library will st be stocked with books for the kids and their families as well. Does your community lack access to a library? Provide a quality education house where kids of all ages could borrow books or donate books and collect school supplies like notebooks, pens, pencils, and all other things. Does your neighborhood lack green spaces? Order a climate action house. Some of the items in this house could include seeds of native plants, information about pollinator habitats, and et cetera. Does your community ex experience food scarcity? Create no hunger house, a place where community members could give and take food as needed. Each school will have a menu from which to select their village design. Options will include various green space layouts, and seed choices, number of houses desired, pre-designed pre or blank houses, and much more. This will allow each location to pick and choose which options best suit their school location and their community. The Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Carpenters Council has committed to provide all the manpower to create these villages. They are also hoping to work with local high school carpentry, carpentry programs to, ve to develop after school carpentry carpentry programs in their academies. They have also donated over $1,000 in the materials to build six of the houses to be built at JCPS schools. The Bread Loaf Teachers Network Next Gen Louisville site includes students from Fern Creek High School and myself from PRP High School. The initial two community lending villages will be placed at these two schools and will be available as an example for other schools. We, present a, we will present a proposal to our other next-gen sites, including schools in Aiken, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Vermont, Navajo Nation, St. Fate Indian School, and Lawrence, Massachusetts. Fern Creek Friends at the Library currently stocks the Little Library at Fern Creek High Community Center and will assist us in stocking our lending library houses at Fern Creek High. They've worked with us for, for over two years to provide literacy, resources, and events in our community. Now, for JCS, we are asking JCS to offer professional development credits for teachers who attend PD sessions regarding implementation and maintenance of our spaces. Sessions will be led by our advisors, Lauren Neiman and Heather Jones. Almost all school-based environmental education curriculum developed and in initiated by teachers, 92% of which. Only a few schools have professional development and environmental education. We are also asking for JCPS to dedicate a 10 by 10 foot space at every interested JCPS school for our project. So let's compare. We are asking for approximately 567 times smaller than the space of a football field. That's a rather small space, but it can make an astronomical impact within our community. We have created multi-tiered sponsor levels to allow community members to support our project at many different financial levels. We have options to sponsor an individual kit, which would include one raised bed or one lending house, or multiple different kits at different JCPS schools. Our goal is to implement at least one raised bed and one lending house at every JCPS school within the next year. In the long term, we hope to help schools build upon their existing spaces to further assist their communities. What we're asking for our panels today isn't just money, but an investment. An investment of the community. An investment granting accessibility. An investment in a culture of sustainability. Supporting our initiative could provide thousands of students the unique opportunity to learn about local ecosystems in an outdoor learning space that they designed, and a space that may provide solutions for environmental or social inequities. By bringing student learning from the classroom into the community, students can work authentically, collaboratively, and creatively to promote a sense of being within schools and the community as well. Authentic learning builds skills, Authentic learning is equitable. Authentic learning enriches us socially, emotionally, and academically. Each village will be engraved with a 3D plate on it, which includes a QR code, web address, and other contact information for those interested in a village or planning information for their property.
And if you want to learn more about lending libraries and how you can make a difference within your community, you can email us or follow us on our socials. Without people like you, none of this could be possible. So thank you so much for your interest in our work. Does anybody have any questions?